Hey, what's up? This is Dano Kaiser for GTTV here at E3 2006, and with me now is Jade Raymond, who is the producer of one of the most talked about titles, which is Assassin's Creed for PS3. Well, this game is created by the core team that created Prince of Persia's Sands of Time, and we we're actually given a really cool mandate, which is very ambitious, which is to try and redefine what next-gen gameplay is. What is next-gen gameplay? Everyone's talking about next-gen. So one thing is crowd, and I think a lot of people are talking about that. Basically, the crowd gameplay exists on a lot of different levels. We have a basic simulation that's running. When you're not doing anything, the crowd has all its own individual AI. They walk around, the people get hungry, they have the needs to socialize, they have needs to sit down and rest, and that creates this really believable and immersive experience with the crowd. Then you have really their reactions to what you're doing. So a lot of the gameplay is about understanding the crowd and using social rules to stay hidden to your advantage or in the escape or you know at different steps along the way to your assassination you know when you're in that world it's it is really about creating that immersive experience which I think is on the way to being pulled off really well and the vision behind that is more than just creating that experience but it ties in significantly with the gameplay correct yeah so another thing that we've tried to do is that you have to make sure that these elements of the crowd and the gameplay in that is readable and understandable I think we've seen in the past main characters or stories evolving based on your actions what we've tried to do is evolving NPCs what you're trying to do or you can choose not to do it in fact is win over the population and then these people will start behaving like to your strategic advantage. So there'll be recognizable people in the crowd, for example the three gossiping ladies who are running around um, who will start behaving more like walls. You want to kind of avoid them because they'll probably alert the guards more easily and get excited more easily. There's also going to be, um, you know, beggars on the side of an alley that may grab on your legs and slow you down. But there's also the opportunity to help people in the population out and have those same kinds of People who can be traps for you um, become traps for people who are pursuing you. The inspiration for the way the character moves, he's a highly trained assassin and we think you should be able to go everywhere. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be these weird arbitrary rules like why can I hold on to this thing, why can I you know, smash this door and not that door. Why can... So we started from the foundation that anything that looks interactive should be interactive. Anything that sticks out more than two inches is interactive. So that means that when you're walking around anything that looks like a ledge, anything that looks like a rock in the wall that sticks out a bit, anything that's a post is all your playground that you can hook onto and use to your advantage to get around. So we're trying to give the player the feeling of like real freedom and the freedom to not only create your own path but also create your own style. So kind of like Tony Hawk without the skateboard, like really to be able to use your environment and also pull off some cool moves that other people like to watch. What is the ultimate goal when they pick up the controller and get into the game world for them to experience right out of the gate? On the controls, um, another thing that was important to us is accessibility. And uh, given that we already have over 800 interactions, a traditional control isn't going to work with that because if you're trying to figure out you know, a combo-based control, you know, triangle, triangle, square, circle, it's really hard to remember those kinds of things. We don't want people to have to play with a cheat sheet. You want to be able to just kind of be immersed and be doing the actions. What we did was we based the controller on a puppet model. And so basically the triangle is your head, um, the square is your, wep your hands with weapon, the circle is your hands without weapon, and the X is your feet. And so basically, um, I think what we started to see is a lot of contextual controls in past games, but it was always one button that did everything. Now we've mapped the button to a body part, and then we've given a modifier, which is R2, which can basically make you change the intensity with which you do an action. So for example, by default I'm running. If I hold down R2, then I'm going to start walking. If I'm running and I press on circle my hands without weapon, I forcefully push someone out of the way. If I put the low profile down, then I press on circle, then I kind of move people slowly out of the way. If I'm in a fight situation and I press on the hands with that weapon button, I'll give a punch. Or if I'm with the hands with weapon, I'll take my sword out or whatever weapon I have on hold there. Same thing with the legs, you know, anything that looks like you want to run up it like a wall or jump, it's the leg buttons. And if there's someone in front of you, you'll kick them. So you don't have to think, you just have to think in this second to second instance what I want to do is use my feet and you use your feet. And anytime we've added new stuff to the game you kind of are just pressing what you think and then you notice the character doing a new thing. So it's cool in development too.